Is the bring a trailer market in turbo boost or is it about to flame out? Tonight we have special guest Anthony Vera from Our Smiths. He knows what time it is and it's time for the bidding to start now. Bid Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show where we bring the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. Boom! It's time for a brand new live episode of Bid Nerds. Your nerd out on the most interesting cars from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites like Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, P Car Market, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. My name is John Polnick. I'm your host coming to you live from the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas at the Rami Studio on the second level. Uh, my co host, Michael Deeb, how are you, sir, in San Francisco? Yeah, man, what's happening? So uh, I heard uh, we, we have a super sub, or do we have a scab? Like, what's going on? Man? Oh, man, look at that. Look at that. Doing all right. We were supposed to have Alex from Max RPM. We're going to be heading up to the Northwest this weekend. Uh, if you are in Seattle, actually, if you're in Bremerton, uh, what is it, the Blink-182 song? Uh, or Green Day, I don't know, one of the two. I always get the two mixed up. Uh, hop on the ferry if you're in Seattle and go out to Bremerton, and you can meet the nerds this Saturday <laughs> at the Tech Ed session at uh, Max RPM. And uh, Alex is hosting that show. It's going to be a great time. Uh, but uh, because Alex is trying to finish up and Engines and preparations for the show. He dipped out on us on the last minute. That son of a gun. But we've got yeah. a ringer tonight. We got one better for you. Anthony. Put me Vera. in, coach. That put is me right. In, coach. We've been waiting to put him in, and I'm a little scared. He's going to make us look bad, yes. Michael Deeb. I'm scared. <laughs> scared. You know what? I mean, but he underwrites the show. He can come on whenever he damn well pieces. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is a good point. You make an excellent point. What's up, Anthony? Yeah. How are you in the Spud Syndicate? Yeah, everything's great. The weather's calmed down a little bit up here, so it's not so cold. A couple days ago, it was ridiculous, but uh, yeah, it's calmed down. Nice day, nice Sunday. Let's get it Look going. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the collectibles right behind him. He's got all the all cool the, stuff. There. He's yes, showing he us up yeah. is what he's doing. Yeah, $6 million man in a Lego Porsche and a bid nerd hat. <laughs> I want to be Anthony when I grow up. He needs a little yeah. head. He needs a little head. That's uh, you got a little head over your shoulder, and I got a little head on on my shoulder. That's the one thing we need to. But he does have uh, the super badass hat there. Uh, he yeah. is rocking the bid nerd swag. You can have bid nerd swag. There's two ways you can get bid nerd swag. One is to get a Yahtzee. Uh, like Anthony did uh, with when people when you guys play along with us, uh, folks who get Yahtzees get hats. And the other way is to go to guyscustoms.etsy.com uh, and buy one. Uh, Rochelle will make you one with your name on it. Uh, they are available now, and you can also get T-shirts. So gyxcustoms.etsy.com. That's gyxcustoms.etsy.com. Uh, later, I'll have the link in the uh, description of the video below, so you can order your very own Bid Nerds hat. Um, before we get to predictions and talking about last week's show and reconciling how wrong we were, I uh, mm. just want to give a shout out to our good friends at Godin Porsche and Godin Classic of Las Vegas. If you're looking for a classic Porsche or parts for your classic Porsche, give our friend Steve a call at Godin Porsche. And uh, normally we talk about our Smiths, but I got Anthony yeah. right here. Why don't, Anthony, yeah. why don't you tell us about our Smiths? Yeah, um, so we're I'm a full service Swiss watch shop. Uh, I specialize in Swiss only uh, mechanical watches, um, buy, sell, trade service. Uh, been doing this for eight years in as a watchmaker. Uh, most recently, boutique watchmaker at a, a Breitling and Hoyer boutique. So, uh, you know, back independent and can be happier. No, good for you. Well, it sure is awesome to have you finally join us. We're looking forward to meeting you in person uh, this yeah. uh, in April. Uh, you're coming down for air and water. Um, is that still happening? That's happening. Excellent. It's, as far as I know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Any, still happening. Already, hey, so. hey, is there anybody going to jump in with you and make the trek down from 
I guess Boise so, to Vegas. So my brother originally was going to come with me. Um, he may have had something come up, but funny thing is my dad, instead of driving down from the Sacramento area, has decided he might fly out to Boise and make the trip with me down. Oh, cool. Um, oh, sweet. Yeah. So, yeah, he doesn't want to put the mileage on his Targa, is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> He's smarter than all of us. Well, I yeah. may drive out to Vegas when you arrive, and then, you know, if I could tease ahead, JP, yeah. uh, that Wednesday before Lufta Cult, which would be if, if Saturday is the 27th, so 654, the Wednesday the 24th show, uh, theoretically, you'd have Anthony and Deeb in studio with you and Wade and and whoever else. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have to have like a little An bid nerds party here. In, yeah, Anthony's in dad. Vegas. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's yeah, open studio time. night. Yeah, we'll put some folding chairs and popcorn outside the window so they Heck can all watch yeah. us. Yeah, maybe we'll get them. To, be, we'll just move the show down on the stage out front. That'll be kind of fun. That'd be oh, we'll, that'd be really cool. We could do something cool. Uh, and then the next day, theoretically, we would all drive and make the pilgrimage out to Costa Mesa for Air Water, which uh, sounds like it's shaping up to be a fun event. Anthony, I'm excited, man. I can't wait to uh, meet you in person yeah. and hug it out. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Air Water is going to be a blast, I think, coming down to Vegas on Wednesday and hanging out with you guys live. That's going to be a blast. So it's going to be like a Porsche vacation, right? Yeah, so, yeah. it's yeah. going to be a great yep. time. Yep. Yep. Uh, Rand is Randy B coming with you? Uh, Randy's flying down. He's flying uh, down, okay. Yeah, so he'll be down there by the time we get down there. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Well, yeah, so he's asking you, Deeb, if uh, you're going to be at your uh, restaurant, the Knob Hill Cafe, on Tuesday, by the way. that's Who's uh, that, Randy? Uh, Randy B is asking that. So Yeah, absolutely, Randy. All right, yeah. cool. Will you give Randy my phone number and just have him call me? And, uh, and yeah, I will. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Thank well, you. let's get to the show, guys. Uh, shout out to all our friends in the Nerd Herd. Everyone's saying hello to one another in there. It's always fun to watch the group. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, we've always got new people in here. It's great to see Howard joining us tonight. We got Ace. Uh, we got, uh, I think Ace is a new guy, right? Yeah. I yeah, think he's so. got yeah. emojis. Love Ace. it. Right on. Uh, welcome to the Nerd Herd, Ace. Chris Carbine, uh, he just finished up the, uh, what was it, the Texas Hill Country Texas Rally? Hill Climb, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Three, um, dude, they had 300 cars. He sent insane. me a photo. He sent me a photo that was probably from a hotel they were staying in where it looked like they were- 300 cars? Two, Two or three stories up, and they were looking at a, a section of parking lot, and there's like four rows of a parking lot full of either long hoods or G-body Porsches. Because, again, they don't take 964s or 914s yeah. or 993s, nothing like that. And I sent immediately back to Carbine. I said, hey, is that all the cars? Like, is that one shot of all the cars? And he goes, oh, hell no. He goes, there was 300 cars. There were not – like there was almost 100 cars in the photo that he sent me, and that was – only a third of it, like 300 yeah. cars. What a what an event, man! We got to go next year, JP. We have to. Looks have to like make some they arrangements. had a great time, and uh, thanks, Chris. After all of that, uh, still finding a way to join us in the nerd herd to nerd uh, out and to uh, nerd out. Hopefully, you got some other nerds with you. Uh, we love you. Thanks for hanging out. And if you guys are in the nerd herd right now, there's a bunch of you hanging out. Hit that like button. Hit the thumbs up for us real quick because uh, you know how that helps us get the show out to more nerd herds. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> let's do this. All right, let's get to the show. Uh, we made some predictions. That's what we do on this show. It's the Price is Right, uh, but with cars on Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids. So we made predictions on the last episode. And the thing we always do, if you're part of the nerd herd, if you watch the show, you know know that we don't run away from uh you know our incompetence we get right in its face and show you just how bad at this we are uh let's get to the first car on the list from the last episode how wrong were we on that one michael d jp i'm just gonna step on your toes to open the show we actually i mean I, look we did have matt crandall on mr 911 mm. r himself mr avant-garde Mr. I used to be a dealer principal and run a Lamborghini and Ferrari thing. And, oh, by the way, I race a Porsche Cup car. Um, but, yeah, Crandall came on. And uh, collectively, JP, we did pretty good. So uh, here, let's without further ado, let's start with the car that you and Crandall uh, collectively agreed was a pile of, um, well, you know what. Yeah. Uh, the 1992 Audi S4. Um, I am a closeted Audi fanboy. I think this is a, a, a pretty car, and uh, I would like to drive one. But, um, you know, the more we drill down on these cars on the auction site, the more we listen to people like you and Matt bash the snot out of these things, um, I probably don't need to own one, but I would love to drive one one day. 
Um, again, my dad had an Audi and I had an Audi and anyway, I just really cool stuff. So anyway, this car is a Euro example. It was on bring a trailer out of winter garden, Florida showing 190,000 kilometers, uh, which is about 118,000 miles being a Euro example and being part of the Volkswagen Audi Porsche group JP, this car has a ZZZ VIN, um, which is what us as uh, Porsche guys have come to know um, is uh, what the German auto manufacturers do for their rest of the world cars. So this with a ZZZ VIN, uh, a couple of upgrades, but not like a full built engine. This is just some bolt on stuff. The car looked to be in nice condition. And we all agreed that the sport cloth seats in the front of this thing uh, were someplace we'd all collectively like to sit. Uh, without further ado, I jumped in the deep end, stepped on my Johnson right off the bat. I said $21,000 would be what it would take to bring it home. And uh, JP, you started laughing. And then when you stopped laughing, you said $12,004, being an S4. Uh, Wade went $14,444. And Matt took uh, attacked just over Wade at $14,750. Um, Anthony, I know you remember looking at this car. Do you remember what your impressions were when you peeked at it? And, and maybe somebody will post your bid so that you'll be reminded exactly what you said. I, I actually was in and oh, out. You were late. Uh, oh, on, you were late. On, That's right. Yeah, because yeah. your bid's not in the, in the... Randy doesn't have your bid up there. So no, what do you think? No, I mean... It looks okay. The mileage is scary. Those motors are scary. Um, <laughs> you know, for me, I'd be in it like 16.4, and that would be it. 16.4. So at 16.4, you would have won, but um, you didn't You didn't get your bid in, so that's all speculative. We're, we're all going to accuse you of <laughs> cheating. Um, JP, <laughs> our car did find a buyer at $17,000 after 35 oh, wow. bids. Um, again, uh, Anthony's bid would have been the winner there at 16.4, but Matt I, winds up getting that one at 14.750. I was over at 21,000, so I busted. Um, JP, I know you don't really care too much about these cars, but any it, like, do you think that was well built or is 17,000 you still wouldn't want one? Yeah, I think that's way too much money for this car. I feel like, I mean, look, I do like, they're fun to drive. They look, I like the way they look. I've always loved Audi interiors. They've always been way ahead of their time. But I feel like if you're going to, you know, I, I, I like Jags better. And just get a Jag if you want something that's going to break down all the time. Oh uh, you know, it's I just, if you're going to look style, I think you can be, I think you could look much cooler broken down on the side of the road in like an XKR than you would waiting for AAA uh, in, a, in an S4. Uh, uh, these Audis always look just like cheap Craigslist cars. Um, even the special ones. And I think that's the problem. Whereas, you know, there are other marks that just, you know, may not be as reliable, but uh, I don't know. Uh, not loving it, but there it is. I know people dig them and I know they have a lot of performance. Anthony, we were talking before we went live that you've been watching the show for over a year now. You've been part of the mm -hmm. nerd herd. Have you, in the year that you've been watching the show, ever heard anything more indicative of the catchphrase, don't listen to us because we don't know what we're doing. And when my partner says, why would you buy an Audi? If you're going to break down on the side of the road, get a Jag. Like, that is the most bitter That's solid. ever. Tell me how I'm, I'm wrong. <laughs> you know, terrible I, advice. <laughs> I, I'm actually going to argue with you, JP, because... Uh, of course you are. That's why we brought a, you on. <laughs> my, my brother's a British car guy, and he's had a plethora of them, unfortunately, to his bank account. Um, and recently, he had an XKR coupe and it was the xkr 100 and basically he he got out of it because all the electronics <laughs> had just failed i mean it, it was it, it was a ticking time bomb it's the only car i've ever been in from a country where it rains non-stop <laughs> that doesn't keep rain out and it was a coupe hardtop <laughs> what are they doing over there i mean I, I, I'm, I'm still waiting for you to like counter what i said because yes yeah. i agree jags yeah. are pieces of junk that break down all the time <laughs> like audis <laughs> but they just look better so if you're gonna be stuck in something on the side of the road what do you got i i guess <laughs> he's like i guess I, no, i'm I not can, gonna argue yeah. with you because <laughs> I, I wouldn't have an audi either so <laughs> there you go 
And JP, I have it on good authority that uh, right up until like the mid 1980s, every Jaguar was made in a factory that still had dirt on the floor. Like That's they had, true. they hadn't laid a foundation true. for the factory until like 1987. And uh, I'm, I'm fairly the nerd herd can correct me on that, but I think that's accurate intel. Yeah, it's not like anybody's swapping out uh, their broken down uh, Audi engine for a Jag engine. I mean, that's not happening, or vice versa, right? They're both uh, they're the both world. great looking lawn ornaments uh, that, that are fantastic when they work. That you're like, oh, and that, that's see, that's the problem with cars like like these Audis and the old Jags and Land Rovers and stuff like that is that when they do work, it's like living in Seattle, right? You get a month and a half of summer where everything is just great, and it makes you forget how ishy it is the rest of the year when you're cruising down the road in a 12 cylinder jag or that s4 and everything and you're in that like zen moment where everything happens to work there's no check engine lights you don't have a christmas tree there's not 15 (laughs) gallons of oil spilling down the road right you're just like oh this is so great and you just forget about all that pain like a battered wife is like, oh, you don't know him like I do. Uh, and, then, my, my, and then he turns around and smacks you in the mouth. And you're like, oh, that's Ladies funny. and gentlemen, my, my marketing <laughs> guru partner who just who just did the ad campaign for Jaguar. Jag ownership. It's like living in Seattle. <laughs> or being a battered wife. Uh, see, Randy yeah, yeah. agrees oh, with me. He's God, part of this. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they're sexy. Oh, Come on. Man. All right. Yeah. We're having a little fun with that. Uh, what do you guys All think right. of the results of this little Audi? Uh, was that well bought or did someone just buy themselves a smack in the mouth? Um, let us know in the comments below and uh, we will uh, look at those comments and I'll answer. You know, Deep, you got to get in there and, and answer some comments yes How come you hate the nerd herd what's the deal i love the nerd herd yes I absolutely I I don't, oh my god i'm scolded nerd herd hit that thumbs up guys there's I, i'm seeing nine thumbs up but i know there's a lot more uh members of the herd in there so uh let's get that thumbs up so so this thing gets shared to some more people all right what was the next car on the list all right jp so blah, 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 blah. i picked this car which i thought would be interesting to look at doug Demiro found himself a 2014 McLaren P1 that I think is from Ogara um, down there in San Diego. Uh, our car is fusion green. Um, it's got just 4,700 miles on it. It is equipped with the pretty badass uh, handling package that McLaren calls race active chassis control suspension, um, which I'd love if somebody could tell us what that cost as a standalone option. I bet you, JP, it's like an $80,000 option to get the the high tech, uh, you know, dampers. Um, there's also this thing where they do the uh, second generation of the batteries. Um, and the owner of this car has ordered those, uh, but they are just sitting there waiting to be picked up and uh, he's not paying for them. So in other words, the new owner can decide if he wants to buy the batteries or not to update it. Um, but anyway, Ogara brought it, interestingly, to Doug DeMiro's Cars and Bid site, uh, where it wound up for auction. And I started the bidding. Um, where did I go? I went pretty high at $1.6 million, which would sort of match the price of the last one that sold. I apparently stole your bid, so you just put a dollar above $1.6 million. Uh, Wade took the over. He liked the car. He's the youngest guy in the room. Not surprising. Wade was the high bid at $1,670,000. Uh, and Matt took the more, um, what is it, bearish turn. So Matt gave us $1,550,000. Uh, Anthony, what do you think of a green McLaren with 4,000 miles and its chances to sell on cars and bids versus where we would expect to see it on Bring a Trailer? Yeah, I you know I like green. I I, I don't like a P one. Um, they lost the soul for me when they went to the hybrid stuff, and mm-hmm. I'm not surprised at the price of these cars nowadays. But I, I don't know with that kind of money, I just I I'd, I'd spend it somewhere else. But um, mm-hmm. you know, with the batteries not being installed, you would think that would hurt a little bit, and. Um, you know, on cars and bids, if I had this car, I think I would have just put the batteries in and gone to a live auction with it. I, I don't I don't know that this is exactly the right platform for this car. So um, I agree. With maybe you I'm wrong. The, yeah, I agree with you. Live auction would have been a ber- better place for it. And I may have misspoke uh, when I said the batteries are sitting there and he didn't put them in. I think we discussed that the batteries might be on back order, not just for this owner, but for 
several cars of this generation that want to update their bounties. Um, uh, but the order has been placed, but I don't think they're in the car at this point. So uh, what would you give us as a number uh, with everything that you just told us? Uh, I, I don't know, 1.525? 1.525. All right. Again, that would make you the uh, low man at that number, and that would have been a good place to be. Our car... The hammer dropped at $1,475,000 where the car failed to sell on just 25 bids. So Anthony's idea is that get this car spruced up and put it in a live auction. And I think that's a pretty good uh, place for it. Um, certainly, I think this car would do better on Bring a Trailer. I just think the bigger audience would serve this car well, especially with a rare color like the Fusion Green. I don't recall seeing a green P1 before. Um, so many of them are black and gray and stuff like that. Uh, so it is eye-catching, even if it's not for everybody. It might not have broad appeal, but for the guy who had to have a green P1, your car is waiting for you. Uh, JP, what do you think of that result? Uh, failed to sell, not even touching 1.5. What do you think? Yeah, well, I wanted to ask Anthony, actually, I mean, because he said something that, that kind of jumped out at me. You know, it's like, okay, they jumped the shark, you know, when they put a battery in one of these. And it's kind of like the law for or was it the La Ferrari and then the 918? Yep. Uh, the, the, and then even you can kind of lump the silly BMW i8. There were a bunch of those hybrid supercars that all came out. They were all kind of part of that same class. Um, and I feel like out of those cars, really, I guess have to push the the BMW out of that. But of those yeah. three cars, of those hyper cars, the hybrid, the kind of beginning of the era of the hyper car era, as much as I agree with you 100%, I'm not a fan of any of them. Uh, if you were to pick one of those three, which one would you prefer? Uh, the La Ferrari. It, yeah. It's kind of V12. It's the most um, F1 derived, I guess you could say. So... To me, it's the closest to purity, uh, and it's a Ferrari. It's a special Ferrari. It's always going to be special. I, I think the P1, you know, eventually it'll have ugly problems with the hybrid system, and those cars are just going to be stuck in between one and two million. Forever. Well, won't they all have problem that same kind of problem though? I kind of feel like the Porsche is going to eventually have that issue, and so is the uh, so is the La Ferrari. Yeah, but I I think with a Ferrari the guy that's buying a Ferrari is going to, he's not going to care because he's not going to drive it anyhow. Right. Uh, you know, and, and the 918 seems to be something that people actually do drive, but I guess the P1, in my opinion, is just the weakest brand in the three. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, mm -hmm. there's followers that are uh, of the Porsche brand. There's followers of the Ferrari brand. And ultimately we buy bad Porsches because we like Porsche. Uh, <laughs> same thing with Ferrari. I mean, look at the Mondial that you like so much. People are buying that only because it says Ferrari, not because of any other reason. <laughs> um, and, and that's, that's so bad. You know, La Ferrari is still better than a good P1, I guess. It's got a V12. Deep, have we ever seen any of those three cars, uh, or at either of the other two cars on cars and bids? Is this the first time Doug DeMiro has uh, gotten one of these question. golden triangle cars? It, it, if if he's gotten one, I would say he may have sold a 918 or tried to sell a 918, but I don't rec I don't, yeah, remember, I don't remember that. that. But yeah. definitely definitely no La Ferrari on on Doug's Namiro site. Um, and uh, the P1, maybe, but I would give the 918 uh, a better chance. I think they built a few more of them, um, and I just think they they probably brought like let's just say there there's 400 of each of these cars. Porsche would have brought more of those cars here, whereas McLaren would not necessarily have brought the majority of their cars stateside because they don't have they don't quite have the the following the, the clientele yet. So chances are that we that he's he might have run a Porsche, but that'd be a good one to look up. Maybe somebody in the herd can figure that out for us by the end of the show. Yeah. Good question. Well, what do you guys think of the results of this uh, McLaren P1 of the Golden Triangle of Hybrid Supercars? Is this the one to get? Did Doug DeMiro start on top, or is he at the bottom of the pyramid and is going to work his way up to the Ferrari and the uh, Porsche? Let us know in the comments below. And what was this? Uh, we, we made some predictions on a couple more cars on the last episode. We were a little heavy. Yeah. We were time. heavy. We were heavy. We wanted Matt Crandall, Matt Crandall to stay on forever, mm -hmm. and then um, he didn't. But anyway, um, <laughs> I thought this other car was kind of interesting. This was a 2010 Tesla Roadster Sport 
with just 6,900 miles on it from new. The car is in this uh, really weird uh, bright orange paint scheme that I don't recall seeing another Tesla in the bright orange. Um, and then it's also had an R80 battery upgrade, and it's been treated to a carbon fiber hardtop. So it seemed to tick a lot of boxes for a car that has remained kind of collectible in value, if not in performance and cult following. Um, I think for those nerds out there that are speculating, this might be the example of a Tesla Roadster that you'd want to put away. Without further ado, I thought we'd jump on this car since it was on cars and bids out of Fairfield, California. And I opened the bidding JP at $105,000 where I was sure it would sell. You took the under by a bit at 99000 and Wade, the young and tech guy in the room, was actually really bullish on this car. He gave us $122,000. Uh, and then Matt, who doesn't like hybrids and didn't like the Tesla, also thought this car should bring about one hundred eighteen grand. So, Anthony, I can't remember if your bid came to us on this one. What did you think of the Tesla in orange with the battery upgrade and the super low miles? Yada, 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 yada. Um, yeah, I don't normally make bids on the EV stuff. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I just don't get them. It's like a non-alcoholic beer. Uh, yeah. Just, <laughs> you're missing the point, in my opinion. But yeah. um, I, I'm sure it sold, you know, right in that 95 thousand dollar range um <laughs> I, I i can't see why you'd spend over that i i just i don't know <laughs> yeah so so it it didn't sell for that number but you'd have had a yahtzee on that number oh come on in swing it hard this guy <laughs> come on grand. i i'm convinced he's actually looking at all these on his phone he's like i don't know i i hate this car I get i'm on that for it <laughs> yahtzee um it failed to sell at that number though 95 is where the bidding stopped 56 bids on the way to failing to sell JP. That was our high bid count of mm. the week, and we did four cars. That is a lot of action. So my question to you is this. Was the car on the wrong platform, and there was another 10, 15, 20 grand in it on BAT? Or do we believe that the audience that is the cars and bids you know, auction crowd – uh, speaks for the people of the United States of America, and that ninety-five grand is truly all this car is worth. Read the tea leaves for us, JP. What do you think? Ninety-five FTS. Would they have gotten more money on a different platform? Is this car actually worth more? I mean, the smart kids in the room, Matt and Wade, both thought this car left twenty-five grand on the table. Uh, I think it was absolutely the right platform. If you are selling an EV, Doug DeMero is your weirdo to do it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it, I, I think this car is worth more. I think it's just still, it's one of those kind of dip situations. I think, you know, right now EVs are getting a lot of bad press. Um, Chris Carbine popped up there and he's like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fire hazard, right? <laughs> um, we, ju we all just saw the headline that uh, what probably sunk that, super tanker uh, full of Porsches and Audis uh, a couple of years ago. You know, all the first round of GT2 RSs went to the bottom of the Atlantic because a uh, Porsche EV is the one is what caught the dang thing on fire. And, you know, what you <laughs> see so often when these things do catch fire is that you can't put them out, right? Uh, you, the, the, the fire trucks show up and they just, they're only there to make sure that the fire doesn't spread to other things. Um, they just wait for it to go out because you could empty two or three fire trucks on a one of these and they're just going to keep burning but that said i mean look burn, baby, you know there uh, a lot of gas a lot of ice cars are burning down out there too like one thing when you drive from las vegas to any other city if you go to la or you go down to phoenix or any direction out into the desert um as you're driving along look for big black spots on the side of the highway people are always like why, there, why is there a big black spot there because yeah. that's where Barbecue. some regular ice car burned down <laughs> you know it yeah. happens all the time those aren't all evs it's been happening for years so uh but yeah i i think doug demiro is definitely the place i think uh i think this car is just a little too early i think it's too early in the season things are getting nice uh but i think uh, this is like wait a month and uh this color is strong too i'm that's what really shocks me this bright orange the car actually looks really good for one of these is it, I, mm -hmm. I get whether whether or not you like these or not this is a pretty darn good example um yeah. so yeah do you think it would have gotten more money on a different platform me yeah man i just it's hard to argue with the idea that bat's 
audience is larger than everybody else's. So I just wonder, I kind of do, um, but only a few grand and like, how close were we? That's the other thing we don't understand is, um, at 95 grand, did, did Doug miss it by 6,000 bucks or did Doug miss it by 20,000 bucks? You know, like that, that's, yeah. uh, interesting, but, well, I um, mean, yeah. We opened up the show with the question, you know, is the market, is the car auction market, the online car auction market, is it flaming out or is it just getting going? I mean, I, I think the results of the last car show, eh, maybe it's a little rough, but I think looking at <laughs> looking at results of other cars all week, I just don't see a flame out yet. We're still mm -hmm. seeing stuff sell and the stuff that isn't selling is still bringing pretty good money. The fact that this car didn't sell, um, it still brought almost a hundred thousand dollars in bids. That means there's still money out there. Someone was willing to shell out, you know, 90 something thousand dollars for this kind of boat anchor ish car. You can't really use these. Like you can't go anywhere. They only get, they're like a, it's got a golf carts range. Um, the yeah. new, the new EVs, you know, the new Teslas, they're, they're, pretty decent right but the the that first generation man you're lucky if you get 95 miles. it's like a it's like the nissan leaf right um <laughs> all right well we'll move on from this car uh let us know what you guys think of the results of this bright orange ev that failed to sell on doug demiro's platform do you think uh like my partner michael deep that it would have made more money uh and would have actually sold if it were on bring a trailer or maybe another platform uh, our friends over at p car market uh and you all know that i'm joking when i say <laughs> our friends at p car market uh these yahoos i don't know anthony uh, you're on the instagram machine all the time i got served an ad from these dip balls that uh it was like they had a picture of some porsche that they just sold and they're like Bid to whatever number on bring a trailer sold on P car market. The answer is clear. P car market is your choice. I was like, was it the flying Hawaiians car? Yeah. That's what I was like. What? It was some, I think it was a cup car or some, but I mean, it was like, it surprised me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, uh, we're going to need to do a special episode that goes, it's like, yeah, guys, you got one way to go let's go look at your chum bucket and see how many <laughs> the cars in there. makes two right i i kind of <laughs> yeah. want to go into the into the chum bucket i want to do a special episode and go into the chum bucket and just figure like go through 20 cars and see how much higher the buy it now price is from the highest bid you go in there every car that's like one hundred fifty thousand dollars only got bid up to like 72 you know i mean it's like the the delta from what people actually want and what they actually get bid to on that platform it's pretty embarrassing p car market give us a break we all know you're gaslighting everyone uh all right let's move on to the next prediction that we made on the last episode all right, JP, a car I know you detest, but I actually love. Not in this color. I still like that dark gray color. But what we're talking about is a 2014 Porsche 911 50th anniversary edition. Um, I know you think this car is all show and no go, but it does have the GTS, basically, uh, motor. It's got the X51 package. Um, our particular car is in San Luis Obispo. Offered on Brigitte Trailers showing just 21,000 miles. There is an incident that is reported on the uh, minor accident on the Carfax report. And our car is straddled with the, I don't think it'll make any money, PDK. Whereas if this car had the seven-speed manual, this car would have been uh, would have brought a lot more money. These are numbered examples. Uh, Porsche brought in 1,963 of these things. Our car is number 0720. Um, so... I like the car. I like the model. I would like to own one with a manual transmission, but uh, Carfax and a uh, the off color that that sort of metallic eggnog color that this one is, um, and the fact that it's a PDK with the bad Carfax, I just it, it's rough. So I said one hundred and fourteen thousand nine hundred eleven dollars is all it would take to bring this car home. JP, you were a bit uh, bearish on this one at one hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred and ninety one dollars. Uh, Wade didn't believe in this car at all and said that he thought it was done at $99,150. Uh, and Matt, who sold one recently, came in at just $111,000, leaving me to be the high bid man. So, Anthony, I think you were with us by then. What do you yeah. do? We have your bid? Yeah, $122,991. That was your bid. You got that? You see it? Yep, yep. Cool, cool. Um, what was your thinking? Want to give us a take on what made you go high on this one, despite the PDK and the Carfax? Uh, yeah, I just thought that 
I, I mean, the buyer for this car, in, in my opinion, is probably, I'm sure my dad's watching, so I'm sorry, but <laughs> but my dad's age, and yeah. he's got a PDK in his Targa, and that's his favorite part. So yep. um, I just, that's always my thinking. Uh, with a light, you know, I, I figured car probably brings another 10 or 20 not uh, damaged. So mm -hmm. I just kind of, I felt, yeah, 122 bucks. It, Sound or 122,000 sounds reasonable, yeah. 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 Not bad, not bad. So, the bidding stopped on our car at $116,000, where it sold on just 18 bids. So, I was the closest to that one, I missed it by just about a thousand bucks. Um, not surprised by that result at all. I, I think that's fair money for a fair car. Uh, this car would have had, I think, the collector value in this car got knocked off once the Carfax got lit up. I think the accident will always hold it back from bringing in a top retail number. The car was available in three colors. To me personally, I think this is the least attractive of the three, but this color is also bespoke to the model, so that does sort of help rinse it out. Um, PDK might be attractive to a whole generation of buyers that the three of us don't exist in, um, but the, the premium price is always paid for the manual. So th that number to me just makes sense for what is here, which is a nice car, but not much. Uh, JP, you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I, it just seems like when the PDK came out, um, they were so Porsche was so proud of it, and then by the nine by the time the nine nine one came out, they were like they made the announcement uh, when this car was was coming out that also the GT three was not going to be available with a manual, um, and you know PDK stands for Porsche don't care, uh, they just do <laughs> not give an F, right? Uh, yeah. they, they're just like they don't. They every now and then Porsche just doesn't want to listen to their customers at all. Ultimately they listened you know by the time the second generation of the gt3 came out they're like all right fine we'll take your damn money um but uh i the, like the 997 speedster that we talked about a couple of uh episodes mm -hmm. ago um that car only came in a pdk um and that is the most insane idea ever. That car should only have come in a manual. And I think yep. this car being a special limited edition numbered car uh, with the heritage should have been a manual only car as well. Right. Fine, great PDK. Everybody loves the dang PDK. Sell it and everything but the special stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. J JP, wrap your brain around this. If it would have come with a manual, it comes with a seven speed. But what if Porsche had put a six speed in right. this car right. this car would be quarter of a million dollars like you yeah. wouldn't be able to touch this car numbered you've got the hounds tubes you've got the green gauges you got fuchs wheels you got a power kit and now you have an unobtainium six speed that you can only find in a three hundred thousand dollar gt car so that that would have been the coup d'etat but porsche didn't call us the idiots. yeah i mean how much is a 911 r going for right now mm -hmm. yeah more than you and i can afford collectively so there you go uh, yeah. All right. What do you guys think of this uh, special anniversary car? Should it have come with a six speed manual like the 911R? Uh, how much is this car really worth? Do you think selling it for 116,000 bucks? Was that all the money to bring a, did bring a trailer, bring it all? Or, uh, could this car have maybe made more money on P car market? <laughs> All right, I just had you know something come out of my nose. That's just ridiculous. Uh, I can't believe I even said that. Uh, man. All right, well, we've got some new predictions uh, right after this. Stick around. Hey, guys, I got to tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, God and Porsche of Las Vegas. If hey, guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if bid nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Heuer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip-top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. Fine Swiss repair. How you doing, Anthony? You hanging in? We've got the man from yep. Our Smiths here with us tonight. What's going on, dude? Just enjoying the show, actually. <laughs> How does it feel yeah. to be on this side of it? You've been watching for well over a year. You're a sponsor of the show. Uh, you're an OG member of the Nerd Herd. What's it like to actually be on the show? Well, I, I don't have to type as much, you know, when I'm, 
when I see you saying something like way out there and I'm like, come on, JP, what are you talking about? <laughs> you can just go right to the source and go, JP, you're an idiot. You're yeah. just not very smart. You can say it right on the episode. How, how fun is well, that? Oh my God. That's you know, so that's, funny. that's the fun of, of doing all this is when you're looking at these cars, really, I, I just go, well, what would I pay for it? You know? And, and that's what we used to do uh, back, yeah. you know, on Craigslist, 20 years ago right and it's just i'd buy that for you know whatever and uh so this is kind of the continuation the only way we can do it now (laughs) well you know and that's uh, that's why we do the show i mean we all just everybody hangs if you've been hanging out with anyone that's in the cars uh at some point when you're like you stop and take a break from driving or you're having breakfast or whatever invariably someone's like hops up did you see car x on platform (laughs) x and what it went for and then that's what the conversation is for the next half hour did you see donut media ripped us off they uh they did a little bat special uh donut media those guys that uh, don't talk about donuts it's like the most disappointing show (laughs) ever because i there's only one thing that i like more than cars and it's probably donuts and i go on there and i'm like (laughs) what you're talking about cars and you're ripping us off talking about bringing trailer come on guys no mention to us uh speaking of mentioning us uh we love it when we see comments about bid nerds on the platform is in the comments below if we make a prediction on a car do us a solid and go over and let everybody know that bid nerds uh, profile that car because when we do it, we, it, it, we, we're not allowed to do it. Right. Uh, but if someone <laughs> yeah. else does it, uh, it's okay. So, uh, yeah, that'd be awesome if you guys could do that. How's it going in the nerd herd, uh, out there, you guys were watching the conversation. Thank you for being part of it. All right, let's get back to predictions. Uh, is the market blowing up? Is it flaming out? Is it on full turbo boost? Uh, let's make some predictions and see what uh, my co-hosts think about what's going on in the market. What's the first car? All right, JP. Uh, Chef, our good friend Chef, your partner at uh, Vegas Auto Fest, which is coming up. Uh, what's the date on that? September 21st, 2024? That is correct, yes. Yeah, look at that from memory. Um, so Chef sends us cars all the time. Thank you, Chef, for participating in every capacity. He wanted us to spotlight this 1960 Porsche 356B Super 90 Outlaw Coupe that is being represented by our good friends at 911R. It's a premium listing on Brig a Trailer. Uh, and the car uh, is an Emery. And it was, I mean, this is Emery built this car in the early 2000s for a client who intended to race the car and campaign it in vintage racing, which this car did extensively. Now, if the car that Emery built, even beat up and worn out and tired because of the throws of regular racing and campaigning it in vintage motorsports. If that car were still here, I'd say we'd have a very expensive car on our hand. But because this car has been so beat up and tired, somebody repainted the car. It looks to be, at least by the photographs, a little bit deeper shade of blue. Uh, And then they replaced the motor with a 2.65 liter flat four. I'm fairly certain that this car would have come with a 2.4 or smaller engine but now it, it's a two point, almost 2.7 flat four made by the company Fat. A Fat modified 2.7 has been um, put into this car um, since the owner acquired it in 2022. So the last two years, the car's been repainted. It's got a brand new motor put in there. And now they're trying to sell it. And I just feel like, JP, that this brings up an interesting debate. Do we like the car because it's been refurbished and upgraded with its components and its cosmetic appearance? Or do we feel like this car has been devalued because they rinsed a lot of the Emery provenance out of the car? Um, I'll try to keep reading to see if the original motor is included in the sale. If so, it seems like it'd be who of somebody to take that motor, if it's truly tired or broken in any way, back to Emery and ask them to rebuild it and then have Emery's motor put back in the car. And I think you would unearth a bit of equity. But maybe I'm being way too speculative for what this is because, again, at the end of the day, it's still a race car. And race cars kind of, in the secondary market, they sort of walk to the beat of their own drum. They, it's hard to value them like any of the other outlaws that Emory would have done. This car was made specifically for racing. It's got bucket seats and roll cage, um, even the windows and things. It looks like it was all done to to race, and this car did. So beautiful-looking car. I'm not knocking it. I bet the 
the motor upgrade is tremendous. I'm sure this thing is super, super fun to to run, even if you're just driving it on a rally or or taking it to the track. I bet it's a hoot. Um, but I just wonder, you know, JP, just being frank, if this is an Emery Outlaw with all the Emery stuff in it, this is a half million dollar car. And I don't think we're going to see a half million dollars at the close of this auction. Uh, that's my early two, two cents, just so you know where I'm coming from. So I lob this pile over to you and ask you to describe, uh, you know, do you like what you see here? And then what do you think is going to happen based on the changes that we're aware of that have been made to this car? It's hard not to love this car. I mean, it is an absolute beautiful car. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it started out with, uh, with our friends over at Emory. Um, but I, I feel like once you, you can't, it, it, it's like being a director of a movie and, and taking a movie and then like changing a couple of scenes and then re-releasing it and, and saying that you directed a, a, a new movie. I, I just, I, I almost feel like that badge on the back needs to be removed. It's like putting a BMW badge on, or a, B, a BMW M badge on a car that's not an M. I just, uh, I love the car. I want to love it. I want to own this car. I, I, Maybe it's a great opportunity to get into something like an Emory car without having to spend a million dollars or something like that. But yeah, pull that badge off. Um, you can't take credit for an Emory car anymore. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Anthony? I'm torn on this one. Uh, I'm with you, JP. I, I feel like this was an Emory car. It still has the bodywork by Emory, but it doesn't have the paint by Emory. Um, it doesn't have the motor by Emory. So the car is always going to have a caveat of, well, it used to be an Emory car, unless you're going to send it back to them. So even then, the premium's gone because now you're taking a car that you're going to buy and then send back to them to make it an Emory again. I, yeah, I, I, I think it's a really cool car. I would drive it. I just think that there's a caveat. Anytime there's a caveat, there's an excuse to discount it. Yeah, I mean, look at the, the attention to detail in an Emory car. Uh, is so amazing. It's it's so like you look at the look at the interior of this thing. We're looking at uh, what is this? The door card or whatever. And you got these screw. I'm sorry. Those just look. That just doesn't look like bespoke to me. That looks cool. No. Um, great. All right. But those the screws aren't evenly spaced. I mean, it's just like it's. This is not Emory attention, okay? Um, this is not Emory quality. You don't get an Emory badge. And representing this car as an Emory, yeah, bad juju here. I don't know. What do we think yeah, this thing's going to bring? Well, JP, there's – so I – because we don't really prep the cars, right? Yeah. Chef sent it over to us. I'm like, all right, cool. It's on the list. I don't have to worry about picking that car because mm. Chef already picked it for us. But we're kind of reading it for the first time like many of the people that are watching. So one of the early comments is, to be fair – this is an outlaw built by Rusty Tubbs Resto out of an Emory built race car. It's a cool car. It should be a lot of fun for someone, but it's a stretch to call it an Emory outlaw. It's not indicative of what Rod builds today. Your part, your point exactly, JP. And then uh, 911R, Matt's place, says, I have asked BAT to take the Emory name out of the listing mm. title. This car. This is a car that Emory built, as per the description, 20 years ago. It was maintained and raced under their tent for many years by three different owners. The last racing owner decided to take it back to somewhat street form. Then our client, who was the second owner, ran it with Emory, purchased it back, and had it, took it to Rusty Golds to repaint it and fit the new engine by Fat Performance. Um, so it's interesting because... Uh, Emory has been removed from the name of the listing, but it is in the description. So it seems like they did what 911R was asking. So the first thing I noticed, which was my question, turns out that's been the, the topic of debate. So I do think we're on the right path here. Very cool car that was originally built by Emory, but the nuts and bolts that are hanging that car together now were turned by a different wrench. With that in mind, JP, how much would you pay for a 356B Super 90 Outlaw Coupe that allegedly now has an inline four engine and not even a flat four. Um, so this is really just a track special and $200,000 for a track special starts to say kind of crazy to me. So initially I thought if it was an Emory, it would be a half million dollar car. Now I'm, I'm not sure uh, there's much left in it at all. So I'm going to give you $210,000 where I think the bidding will stop I have no idea if it'll sell for that number. To me, at 189, I would think the owner would take the money and run because it is no longer an Emory. And uh, finding 
half quarter of a million dollar 356 race cars that don't have a Carrera engine in them uh, is bonkers. This doesn't even have a Porsche engine in it. So I don't even know what we're talking about here. In fact, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous at 210, but I'm just I'm just assuming somebody else will put another bid on there before it's all said and done. So, JP, as I send it back to you, it's at $189,500. It closes in two days. It's got 13 bids, and my number to you is 210. In other words, I think it might make another $21,000 or about another 10% for the bidding stops, but I couldn't tell you if it sells or not. I think it should. I don't think it's worth much more than that. I think they should take the money and run. Where are you at, John? Yeah, I mean, it's great that we had Matt Crandall on here because, you know, we were talking about how great his the photography is with those guys. And it feels what what I, I feel a little honored right now because Michael Deep, I'm sure you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing right now. Uh, we were making fun of some other car. Um, it was it was Shoddy's car, right? Um, uh-huh, yeah. And how that other dealer got a hold of it after Matt sold it. And then they took yep. crappy pictures. And I was like, well, yep. if they had taken a picture of the car in front of a train and like in yeah. portland put a bird on it well yeah. here it is matt's taking my advice he's putting a bird on yeah. it rock <laughs> on matt the fist out buddy i appreciate that yeah. um so i think that means this car is actually going to bring uh some real money it is still an emery it is still an emery body uh no it's not going to make half a million dollars come on give me a break um will it make a quarter i think that's the question will this get to you you know because at a quarter million um, could you get Rod to put a Emory special engine in this thing for a hundred grand or 150 grand? Now you're still <sighs> well under half a million dollars. Um, how much would it cost to have him do a paint job? I don't know. Um, but you know, by the time you're done, if you, ha- how much would Rod charge you to re Emory this car? None of us know the answer to that question, yeah, no. but I do think this car has, um, has room in it based on that. Uh, and if not getting this car for under a quarter of a million dollars and still having some of that Emery provenance. And, uh, you know, he put, you know, this car drives great, you know, it does. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and, uh, I, unfortunately I'm never, I, I'm probably not in a position to be able to say I'm going to be able to buy a, you know, million dollar Emery car anytime soon. So this would be the closest shot I could get at it. I'm going to say two thirty two. uh, what was I going to say? Two hundred thousand three hundred fifty-six. Oh, oh, wait, so wait, you're coming under. You're no, ten no, no, grand. Sorry, so I'm trying to go two, three, five, six. What would that be? Zero, zero. So two hundred thirty thousand three hundred fifty-six dollars. Two hundred thirty thousand three hundred fifty-six dollars. Yeah, because I'm trying to go three fifty-six. I'm trying to be cute, and I'm just effing it all up. Okay. I, I gotta need write to write it down. I gotta write the number down. I need to know your sound. ten thousand number. That's what I need to know. So two hundred thousand. Uh, so you're under six, me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Two hundred thirty-five thousand. No, two hundred. <laughs> Hold it up. Thirty-five thousand. So we can see. Two hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred dollars. That gets me two three five six zero zero. All right, man. All right. That was harder than I thought. These, these, I guess I. <laughs> so I, I can see that Anthony's drinking. He's a smart yeah. guy. I'm, Absolutely. I'm on yeah. Coke Zero, so I got nothing Ant- in the tank. Anthony's in Boise, Idaho, and he's just saying to himself, "My kids are not going to school in Snohomish. That's all." That <laughs> is true. Not ready. Yeah, we don't worry Stay about out of the public school. No way. Sure. Yeah. Holy God. Yeah. All right, Anthony. If you don't have a headache, will you be able to give us a bid for this number? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was an Emory. It's a caveat car. It's kind of hacked up now because not having the flat four in it, I think, I think it ruins it personally. Um, so, you know, I, I think it stops at 197.5. I, I, I All think, right. I think Strong. That's it. Strong. Wait, this is that's... still a flat four, isn't it? I mean, isn't it a Volkswagen no, engine of some sort? Inline four. Yeah, it's an inline four. It's an inline four. They, they changed the motor completely. Four out of what? I got to look at, we got to look at the engine pictures on this one. Talk about something yeah. else because there's no it, way this is an inline four. It's like buying a roller. If it's got an inline four in it, I, I don't, I, it, everything is magical about the car. So it handles well. That's great. And Rod Emery an inline four? It. That's a Volkswagen engine. What are, All right. All right. Oh, well, well they, see, they, that changes it. Bring it. Bring a trailer called an inline four, and then several people in the comments commented about that. So I'm just picking up what I'm reading and not trusting my eyes. 
Yeah. Um, let's see if we can get some pictures underneath it here. Because, I mean, an inline four, that would be like a... Like a, a, K, a K of a Honda motor. A Honda motor or a Volt. Yeah, no, this, this is or definitely. A yeah, okay. Confer- I'm sitting here going, we got it. This is crazy. Um, let's see here. There's some under. There's some underside pair. Yeah, it there looks you like go. A Volkswagen that motor. Is a, yeah. It's a flat four Volkswagen. Yeah. It's a boxer engine. Yeah. It's still, in a, it's yeah. still a flat right, four. It's just not an Emery flat four. It's not a Porsche block. It's That looks like some kind of. But, you know, some of these things, I mean, dude, uh, I bet this thing freaking flies. The question really is. Uh, I 2. think 7. drivability, you know, I mean, it's yeah. like, yeah, at that, at that size, you start getting into overheating issues and this is going to be a tough car to drive around in. Uh, I mean, I, we don't know the car personally, so um, maybe they've got a ton of oil coolers and stuff, but I'm not seeing that. It'd be interesting to see how this car runs out. I mean, race cars are usually fun to drive um, on a racetrack, but not necessarily around town. Whereas an Emory special, uh, that's what's great about that Emory outlaw, you know, four that they make that it's you know it's basically a 964 engine with uh, two fewer cylinders um and modern fuel injection that just makes it just a dream to drive but anyways all right what do you guys think this car will bring uh ever we've all got our bids in here right we're good yep yep yeah. we're good yeah wait who the hell no was a flat yeah board? anthony gave us 197 okay. all right let's let's jump oh go ahead did you close that one yeah we're closing that one out anthony i'm sure is going to get a yachty and make us look bad thanks a lot anthony i appreciate it in advance all right um all right let's go to the next car what do we got the thing about anthony is you can't threaten to like walk away from him he runs the show like what are you gonna do dang it's it a sugar man. daddy you got, got a that, sugar daddy he's on got the show that tonight. sweet hat on <laughs> tonight man let me tell you he's looking good looking all right good. JP, jp picked for us i don't <laughs> even know what you call this generation of car but it's a 1987 Toyota MR2 with a five-speed. Um, what do they call this? W10? Is that the is that the nickname for these cars? Do you know that I moniker, JP? Know. Yeah. All right. Our car is on Bring a Trailer, John. It is a one-owner example showing just 40,000 miles out of Cypress, Texas. Uh, these are powered by a 1.6-liter inline four with a five-speed manual gearbox, white with blue cloth interior, 14-inch basket weave, uh, wheels and one of the uh, highlights is a JVC head unit. What do you think that's worth? <laughs> yeah, right. If it's classic, yeah, yeah. Um, these cars have a target top, and but it came with air conditioning just in case. So uh, pop up headlights. I think that's what's really cool. Um, the idea that it's mid engine. You know, you're talking about the same horsepower as a Miata, probably weighed a little bit more, but the mid engine was Toyota's answer to making you know a two seat sports car that people could afford and have fun driving. Something to get people to sort of relive their youth um, and make a fun, reliable sports car. These cars sold like hotcakes, but I don't know if anybody ever took them seriously as performance cars because they were so grossly underpowered. I don't like the one we're looking at because I don't like the wheels. I don't like the the rockers and the chin spoiler and stuff. Um, you know, if you're going to get one of these things, I just take all the, the the appendages off of it and just just leave it plain. Uh, the way it came from Toyota to me would be plenty. I don't need all this uh, Grand Auto stuff, uh, you know, adorning the car. That, that's all, that that's stuff all Toyota does. stuff. Really? Yeah. I mean, maybe it not the wheels, like it, but the but all the wing and the body kit. Well, I'll let you finish, but yeah, the, that's that's all yeah, factory. In the in the in the the hero pitcher that is the mm-hmm. main pitcher for the thing, the the rockers and the chin spoiler look like a completely different shade of white than the rest of the car. And of course, they're made of different materials, so maybe that's just the case after almost forty years that's or something. Years but uh, of, uh, where, yeah, 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 I do like the interior. I, I do. I like again. These are cool cars. I I literally test drove a white with blue cloth that I. I I wanted to make the guy an offer, but I just wasn't feeling it. But um, yeah, I, I wanted one of these when I was young. I thought it'd be really fun to drive um, and, you know, cool car, but they never, they never really caught on, you know, like as far as like collector value that nobody's um, desiring these things in the secondary market. These cars are pretty soft. This might be one of the nicer ones we've seen, but it's not going to break the bank. Uh, so JP, I lob it over to you. We're early on this car. It doesn't close for three days, so it'll be tough to read the tea leaves. I think you just have to think about, what somebody would pay for a nice MR2 in today's market. Uh, but I send this one back to you. What did you see about it that uh, made you pick it for us tonight? Well, yeah, I mean, I actually love this configuration of the car. I honestly didn't realize that they made 
T-top versions that weren't supercharged. I thought only the supercharger ones had the T-tops. The rest of them either had a sunroof or mm. a, a flat top. But it, that aside, so is it? Huh? So is there a bar down the middle of this one? Yeah, it's a, it's a T-top. Top top. Yeah, it, it is it's, a T-top. It's not a target top. It's a T-top. Did, were yeah. they all T-tops? Correct. Yes. So there was uh, no target. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't until mm. the ne- the second generation MR2. Uh, no, those were T-tops too. Now that I think of it, I don't think any of them were targas. Um, so yeah, but back to this one, uh, so let's hear George, uh, says that this is an a one eleven. So thanks for reminding us on that, George. Thank you. Um, Thank you, George. Yeah, no, but I mean, you, you say that the perform, this car was the contemporary to like Mark two Volkswagens. And we talk about those all the time. We gush mm-hmm. about, um, you know, Scirocco 16 valves and, uh, GTIs and all of those cars. The Miata didn't exist yet. The Miata was still another four years away, four or five years away. Um, 89 was the first year of the Miata. So this is two right. years before the Miata. Yeah. Well, yeah, but this car came out in like 84. Um, so, all right, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. so, you know, the, so this car was on this car was on the road when everyone else was driving 16 valves and, and whatever. Uh, and I know that you like hate the 300 ZX of that era. The Toyota is yeah. kind of, you know what they brought to the table. The, um, the, the, the super at the time was just a dog meat piece of crap. Um, yeah. you know, this car, what year is this one? 87 or 87? 87. 87 yeah. yeah. So in 88 yeah. they came or no, I guess it was 87. They came out with that third generation, uh, Supra and some of those had Targas and uh, and were and were turbos, but that was a you know that was a decidedly upmarket car compared to this thing. Um, it was a lot <laughs> more money. This was, I mean, frankly, this car blows the wheels off of a Mark II Volkswagen. It is mm-hmm. so much better car. I mean. It, it, what it comes down to is styling, whether or not you like the styling or not. But a mid-engine little ripper like this thing, the performance mm-hmm. was really off the charts, and they had more horsepower than the 16. I mean, these all had 16 valve engines. I don't think there was. Yeah, none of them had just an eight valve engine. So right out of the gate, they were 16 valves, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive. Um, this is way more fun than any Mark II Volkswagen. I'm sorry I just said that out loud. It's more fun than a Scirocco. I'm sorry I just said that out loud. Uh, whether or not you like the looks, it all comes down to kind of the nostalgia thing. This just screams 80s. This is definitely, uh, you know, Radwood royalty. Uh, the the honeycomb gold <laughs> four-spoke wheels, probably not my choice. I don't like that gold strip down the side. Yeah, the plastic is kind of discoloring after a while. Um, but, you know, this is basically a Honda, or a Honda at least. Uh, this is a Lotus Elise before there was a Lotus Elise. Anthony, what do you think of these things? Um, well, I'll start off with, I might fall out here pretty quick because my phone's dying, but oh. um, this is my least favorite MR2. Um, yeah, that Really? Compared to the third one? Yeah, yeah I mean, wow. that's ugly, but but this thing <laughs> this thing's too Ferrer, uh, Fiero for me too. Um I don't know, man. I, I feel like this should have always just been a used car on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Um, Love you, Anthony. I, I, I don't I don't get it. It, it. It's just not very attractive. It didn't age like other 80s cars aged. It, it looks like there's a transformer hiding underneath it. Um, it's not for me. <laughs> Have you they, have either I, of you guys ever driven one? Just seriously, that yes. anyway, yeah, you, no, you've driven one. Uh, I have. Like, I want to buy one. When? I, they are so much fun. I don't know how you could say they're not fun. I definitely understand not digging the styling because it looks yeah. like an Atari twenty six hundred with wheels. I mean, there's no doubt about yeah. it. This is not a what you would call a super attractive car, but it is. I just I I'm cra- I it I can't believe you guys don't get nostalgia for the, for this thing. There's so many things from the eighties that suck, but I still like, and I don't see how this doesn't fall into that category. I had a friend in high school that drove one of these. Um, and let's just say the guy that drove a beetle that was like a little bit more custom was way cooler than this guy. <laughs> so I, I, Fair play. you know, that, I don't know, man, it, it's kind of goofy. It didn't age well. The next generation was great. I really liked that. This one, I don't know. It looks like a bunch of stuff stuck onto it. It's, uh... it, it looks like a closed StarTac telephone. 
<laughs> maybe maybe it inspired the StarTac telephone. It might have. I mean, you keep coming up with references from the 90s. This is 80s. This is early 80s. All right. What's it going to bring? Is it going to bring any money at all, or is it going to just uh, – is everyone else going to poop all over it too? I, I uh, poop on over it because I don't want to own it, but I still think this car has a chance to bring – that interior looks brand new, and I love the interior of this car. Uh, if only the exterior matched, um, that would be – you'd have something there. Um, and I could dig another – you know, 100 horsepower out of the motor. But JP, our car is currently sitting at $8,500 with three days to go. That $8,500 is uh, the result of just four bids. Um, we've seen plenty of these cars transact with higher miles in the $20,000 range. So despite this car having maybe, you know, I, like I said, I don't like the body kit that Toyota fitted to this one or somebody else did. I don't like the wheels. I don't like it's uh, a factory kit. Nobody else yes. did it. Yeah, I still think that, that somebody's going to look at that interior, those mileage, and jump all over this. I'm going to give you $24,000 where it will sell. Uh, I think this car will do well, even though I wouldn't I wouldn't pay for it. So where are you at, John? Yeah, that's tough because I didn't think you'd go that high. I was going to say no. like 23 or 24. Um, I don't know. What, what did you say? 24? 24,000. Yeah. Yeah. Do I go over that or under that? I mean, I, I hate going under <laughs> that. Yeah. That's a, I hate going under that because I like the car so much more than you, but yeah. Will anybody pay more than that? Yeah. I'm going to say they will. I'm going to go 25. I'm going to do the over because we've seen the Scirocco's bring 30, $40,000. We've seen the, the GTIs bring $80,000. We've seen Corrado's bring $50,000. This car is easily as good as any of those and looks just as good. Uh, send it over to Anthony. What do you think? JP, was um, that two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Sure, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'll still win. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah twenty five grand. <laughs> I honestly, um, yeah, I I think that most of these are rotting away in a backyard somewhere because they weren't popular for so long. So someone's gonna buy it for fourteen five and regret it. <laughs> Why do you think they'll regret it? Just, I mean, seriously, it's like, slow. Legit. It, it's so slow. You know, <laughs> and if you're going to spend 20 grand, gets, uh, there's just other Is, stuff hold, hold to on, hold buy. On. Is a Mark II GTI slow? Yeah, but that's a style thing. Uh, you know, at least a Mark II GTI has a style about it, you know, where you could at least look at it and go, well, it's an icon. It looks cool. This thing doesn't look cool. <laughs> and even, it, even yeah, us boomer adjacent guys, two yeah. out of three boomer adjacent guys don't think it looks cool. Uh, what do you guys think out there in the nerd herd? What's it going to bring? Uh, most everyone is kind of like hovering in that 20 something range. Kevin's at 22 grand. George is at 19,987. I like what you did there. Uh, Buddha <laughs> is with Anthony apparently down that are 11.5 um 18.5 from ace gerd is at 20 grand that's tough because gerd is always right uh randy's at 17 and a half so this will be an interesting one to watch um we just don't see clean ones like this uh so we will see what happens and uh make sure you guys tune in on the next episode to find out the results all right let's move on to the last car on the list all right, JP, I'm going to bust your chops a little bit here. Right. Um, John typically does not pick cars that are mm -hmm. represented by dealers. We like to we like to pour some out for the little guy. However, Ryan Friedman um, out of Glen Cove, New York, has arguably the best inventory of cool old and current sort of GT and really sporty special edition Porsches anywhere in the market. Recently, Ryan Friedman had been selling more and more cars at auction. Um, and as a result, occasionally we unearth or kick over a rock and find something really cool. JP picked for us a 2010 Porsche 911 Turbo Coupe with a six-speed manual. Do the math on that. What we're talking about is a 997.2 Turbo with a manual. This is a unicorn. By the numbers, and I don't know what the numbers are, but by the numbers, this is a really seriously rare car. Um they just most of the dot two turbos came with a PDK. Um, and so finding one with a manual, I, I would say the take rate is probably JP around 15% if I was yeah. to just ballpark it. Um, and you know, the economy wasn't doing so great either in 2010 or 2009 when you would have been invited to in order one of these cars. So I would say there's probably not even as many dot two turbos as there were dot one turbos when the economy was doing good before it fell apart um so 
Uh, I would say this is a very rare car. Our car is, of course, in New York with Ryan Friedman Motor Cars showing just 53,000 miles. JP, the car wasn't equipped to a pretty high standard. Um, what we're talking about here, if I can read this to you real quick, um, the big option on this car are the 19-inch RS Spider center lock wheels, which are really cool, the manual transmission, and the Porsche Torque Vectoring, um, which is... Uh, you know, a way to help distribute power to the wheels um, besides the limited slip differential um, since this was an all-wheel drive car. Uh, our car had an MSRP of just $140,750. That was a ton of money back then. That was more than um, a GT3. But um, there you go, a super rare car in, in super nice condition. Um, you and I are both, we always joke about these all beige interiors that Porsche had a moment with. This car suffers from that. If this car had a black dash and a black steering wheel, um, I think we would love it a whole lot more. Um, but again, by the numbers, would you just would you just sit on that grenade so that you could have a shot at driving this car? I, I imagine this thing is a ton of fun. We're talking uh, 500 horsepower to the tires. Super amazing car, JP. Nice grab. Um, we just don't see them very often. This one should do pretty well what do you think well i'm going to send it over to anthony since uh, we're worried about his battery going anthony what do you think of this car uh yeah this is i mean this is great right this is the last of the manual turbos uh color combination it's not super great but i mean who wouldn't have this it's a turbocharged mm -hmm. 911 with a manual uh you, i don't know it that's kind of the end of the road for these right so you're never going to see it again um, yeah. so it's, I, I think this is the beginning of the climb and these guys, you know, these cars are just going to keep climbing. So this is a great time to get into them. If you have the money to get into them, um, uh, we're going to regret not getting into them five years from now. For sure. I mean, the, the ball sack, actually, I can't, I can't call it, it's ball sack color, but it's not the ball sack interior because it's not the supple leather, <laughs> leather that we always uh, make fun of. Um, but yeah, that's a, a lot of beige. The thing to do with this car, if you get this, is to fit a modern, like a 991.2 sport steering wheel. Get a black one, and that would, and then uh, some black floor mats and a black gear shift lever, and you will actually kind of, you know, Damp, uh, damp, uh, dampen down all that beige there, and I think it would actually be a pretty nice place to spend a lot of time. That's another thing about the dot twos is that center console is all black, whereas all the nine nine seven dot ones were all had that kind of weird gray color, uh, which wasn't. Uh, awesome either um, but yeah this I mean I don't know how many manuals they made in the dot twos in general but I know like the last year of the turbo what was it 13 or whatever there was literally like 13 uh, manual ones so they just made so few uh, and you're right about that uh, D Porsche Porsche is basically run by a bunch of hedge fund managers. So, mm -hmm. you know, they know that, okay, if uh, demand's going down, the only way to keep prices up is to lower supply. So they just stopped making cars in 2008 uh, when everything yeah. went to hell. So there aren't many 2009, 10, 11, 12 cars in general, uh, yeah. much less ones with manuals. So yeah, someone is getting a very, very special car, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how much this brings. Let's get to those numbers. All right, JP, our car closes in two days from now. It is currently sitting at $76,500. I'm a nine bids. I'm basically going to double that number and say $155,000. Where? I think it will fail to sell. I mm. bet you Ryan Friedman motor cars uh, like Canapa, like Sloan, they ask top of the market. They ask above market all the time. Um, they are uh, very impressed with the numbers they get for their cars. And so they, you know, they like to set the bar higher than most of us expect it to be at. Um, and their expectations might be a little unrealistic. I'm guessing they're looking for 160 to 180 thousand dollars for this car. So at 155, I have a sneaky suspicion that if my bid is correct, it could also coincide with a failure to sell. So just as an aside, um, based on what I've seen with their asking prices, but they do well. They're they're young guys, John. I think you'd get along with them great. They're they're you know they're not they're the antithesis of the people that run like P Car Market. These are young, smart guys that know what they're doing, um, but they. 
man, they like to exploit the top of the market. Where are you at, John? What do you think is going to happen here? Well, our friend Dark Closet here in the Nerd Herd, he's like, uh, Ryan has a 2007 Turbo at 115. It's like, bro, that's a dot one. That's a different animal. I know that the performance isn't that much different, uh, but this is a dot two, which, which with a manual, this is... Yeah. Really, really rare, my man. You, yeah, you just, yeah. So there, that is not apples uh, to apples right there at all. It's, it they're both Mesker engines, but the dot one is a three point six, and the dot two that this car, the JP selected, is three point eight. This is a entirely different animal. They're worth big money. Yeah, they are collector um, cars. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I your your number. What was it? One fifty nine. 155 JP, oh, 159, which is double, yeah, 155, double where yeah. it's at right now. It's basically double. I'm just doubling where it's sitting right now. But I, I wonder in the 150s if this fails to sell. I'm th- I bet you they're looking for 180 or more. So, yeah, curious. Gerd mentioned that there's a lot of owners on the car. I, I think the biggest Seven. problem is the miles. 53,000 miles is really high for something this special. If you want to keep it in that special category, and that's you're right. This is why I picked the car. Um, you know, this is when when we opened up the show is the BAT market on turbo boost or is it flaming out? And it's cars like this that I think are not necessarily the canary in the coal mine. Cause I'm not saying that, you know, we're, we're looking <laughs> uh, at a disaster here or anything like that. But I mean, it's, Look, they're, the blue chip cars keep doing really, really well. Well, The mm. really rare stuff keeps bringing the big money. The weird stuff, not so much, right? That's been really hit and miss. Um, if this were a under 20,000 mile car, I think we'd be getting darn near $200,000 for this yes. car. Um, you're, I think you're right. I think you're right. But this car right. is out of collector land and now into kind of something that's special, but... It's going to be a driver at this point. Uh, 55,000 yeah. miles is nothing. Uh, and at 150 something thousand bucks, what else do you get that would be this awesome? It's tough, right? <laughs> yeah, um, right. You know, I mean, a 3.8 with a manual and a, and a turbo, that's a big deal. Um, I want this car. Uh, yeah, but, you, uh, you know, yeah. So do I go over you at 155 or under? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, Dude, I'm going nuts. I'm going to be the optimist. I'm going to say 159.997 you and say it gets up there. Uh, and because it is so damn rare, but I do think it's a $200,000 car if it had uh, half the miles. Um, and uh, that's going to be the deciding difference. Uh, so at this point, does someone care? Um, you know, like, I mean, how much would a, uh, you know, how big a deal? We know, we always talk about how the higher miles affect the value but this is something that's pretty darn rare when it's the really rare stuff it yeah eh, you know yeah it, we're not again we're not talking about a, a high mileage 997.2 turbo we're talking about a high mileage 997 turbo with a stick yeah. and i think because that like you said there are so few of them i don't know that the mileage will hold it back as much you know again if it was 65 or 80,000 miles and it's like the next owner could theoretically think about crossing that 100,000 mile plateau that You'd think a lot of value would drop off, but 50, low 50,000 miles, I don't think the next owner cares about the mileage at all. They can just drive it and enjoy it. So I don't think that's going to hold it back from its ultimate cash value, which we're going to see here real soon. This is a really good car because it's going to tell us a lot. And, you know, uh, we don't get to see, we don't get to examine this particular model very often because it's just that damn rare. So Anthony, whose battery died, he hopped in there and said 166,500. So 166,500. He's he's pretty uh, wow. he's pretty bullish on it. He's higher than me. Yeah. So uh, that makes yeah, me yeah. feel bad because now I'm probably going to lose. Damn it! But I am glad that I went over because uh, I do think this car is awesome. <laughs> um, Anytime you bid after me and one of our guests bids over you, I always think to myself, "There you go, JP. <laughs> now you know what that feels like." <laughs> uh, Randy B's like, "Damn, maybe I was trying to take the over too." Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> he, he feels my pain. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Well, those are our predictions for this episode. Uh, we want to shout out, like we said at the top of the show, uh, we are going to be in Bremerton. That's uh, Bremerton, Washington, outside of Seattle. If you want to meet the nerds, uh, come on up to Max RPM. Uh, in Bremerton for the PCA Tech Day. Uh, we will be given a little uh, presentation. Should be a great time. That's, 
is it open to the public or do they have to like buy a ticket in advance? They have to be on a guest list. They have to learn. I mean, it's a, hand. it's technically it like a, a speakeasy PCA event, but dude, just show yeah. up. I like, just I show mean, up. Alex yeah. wants every, as many people there as possible. So All if right. you show up in any PC, if someone comes up to you with pleated pants and be like, is your name on the list? Just say you're, you're there with the bid nerds. And, yeah. uh, and, Oh yeah. And, Great. And Get Alex us in trouble. Be, yeah. Well, I mean, come on, we're always in trouble anyway. Um, so man, what's, Ace uh, is saying 170. Wow. What's the name of the brick and mortar? Is it Max RPM is the name of the building? Max RPM Muller, the Max RPM Motorsports. That's Alex Raphael's shop. Motion. Yeah, Max RPM Motorsports. It's important to put the motorsports on there because there's a lot of Max RPM stuff on when you do a search. That's good. Um, but uh, yeah, it's an hour ferry ride from uh, from Seattle. So uh, Deeb and I are going to fly in and hop on that ferry and head on over. It's going to be a great time. Mm-hmm. Um, Feed the fish. Yeah, so uh, lots going on. We've got a show coming up on Wednesday. Make sure you check in on that one to see the results from today's predictions. And uh, Michael Deeb, if someone's like, on, you know what? I just want to get rid of my classic oh, car and take boy, advantage boy, of how boy, great the yeah. market is. Uh, I'm so they busy give these you days. A call? Yeah, What's absolutely. Going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should call me, but you might just be easier to email me at mdeeb. So that's uh, Mary Delta Echo Echo Bravo at Haggerty uh, Let me know what you're uh, what you got, and uh, we'll figure out a way to connect and talk about your car. That is awesome. New films coming up on Durfossa Nation. And um, so make sure you check that out as well. We're bringing back Dur or Die soon since we're getting close to air and water. It's always good to kind of, uh, it's kind of getting into Porsche season, right? Uh, we went it out, uh, we want to shout out again to Anthony. Thank you so much from uh, Anthony from Our Smiths. Uh, for joining you, us Anthony. on the show. Sorry your battery died a little early, but it was great having you on. And uh, I am not looking forward to seeing you uh, spank us uh, with your bids. Uh, so thanks a lot. Um, yeah, Andy Stahl, right. hey, what's up, buddy? Thanks for uh, hanging out. Thanks for all of you in the Nerd Herd. Uh, have you guys hit the thumbs up button? If you're in the Nerd Herd right now, I know there's a lot more of you in the chat right now than there are uh, thumbs up. So please hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and hit the notification button if you haven't done that already as well. Uh, let's see here. Wednesday show, we'll have Wade from Tech Daily back on. And uh, we'll hopefully have Alex from XRPM to be able to join us on that episode. Well, that'd be great. Um, yeah, just before so his big event. Be- yeah, yeah, exactly. So we could talk about that and everything that's going to be going on up there. Um, that's a show, guys. Anything else you wanted to say, Michael D., before we get out of here? No, man. Good night, everybody. See ya. Get those words!